We continue with pedigree diagrams, having done the analysis of a pedigree diagram for an autosomal recessive disorder in the previous video. In this video, we're going to be looking at the analysis of a pedigree diagram for a sex-linked recessive disorder. The first step remains the same. You read the information that's given above the pedigree diagram. You look at uh, the key and the various phenotypes that are displayed and identify the alleles that will be used. So here's an example. It says that we're looking at the inheritance of red green color blindness, which is a sex linked recessive disorder that's carried on the X chromosome. We task with determining the genotypes of the 13 individuals that are shown here. For the key, the circle, which is in blue, represents a female with color blindness. A circle that's plain white would represent a normal vision female. A square that's shaded in blue represents a male with color blindness. And a square that is white inside would represent a normal vision male. Now, the color blindness being sex linked is carried on the X chromosome only. So when we represent the alleles, the allele for normal vision is represented as an X to show that it's carried on the X chromosome with the superscript capital letter B for the normal vision, which is dominant. And the recessive trait, which is the color blindness, is represented by a small letter B. We know from the inheritance of sex that a female inherits two X chromosomes, one from each parent, and therefore she carries two alleles for color vision. Whereas a male carries an X chromosome and a Y chromosome in each of his cells, the Y chromosome inherited from his father is much smaller in size compared to the X chromosome and therefore has much less DNA and less information. So the Y chromosome does not have the locus or position for the allele on color blindness and therefore the Y chromosome does not carry any information regarding color blindness. So a male, therefore, would only carry one allele for color blindness on his X chromosome. So the possible genotypes and phenotypes of individuals, there are three possible genotypes for females and only two for males. A female can inherit normal vision from both of her parents and be homozygous. She'd be a normal vision female. Or if she inherits the allele for normal vision from one parent and that for color blindness from another parent since the normal vision is dominant she'd still have normal vision but if she has color blindness it means that she had to inherit both recessive alleles from both of her parents one from each parent a male that is normal would inherit the y chromosome from the father which doesn't carry any information but from the mother he'll get the normal allele and if a male has color blindness from the mother, he'd inherit the color blindness allele and the father's Y chromosome would have no effect on the phenotype. Now, given a pedigree diagram, the key gives us the phenotypes. If we see a female that has normal vision, we won't be sure because there could be two options. She could possibly be homozygous or she could be heterozygous. Whereas a female that is colorblind, we are sure, has to be homozygous recessive, two of the same small lettered alleles. And a normal male, we are sure that the genotype is a normal allele, X capital B and Y, and the genotype of a colorblind male, we are also sure. So since we are sure of the males, we'll start off with the second step where we're going to fill in the genotypes for all of the males. So let's start with males with color blindness. Right, we can start with number five. Obviously being a male, he has a Y and then X with a small letter B. The same applies to number seven. And number nine also, a recessive allele with Y and number 12 and 13 also would be having a recessive allele for color blindness with the Y. The males that have normal vision would have the X with the capital letter B with a Y, and that's number two and number three. 
So at this point, we've already identified the genotypes of all of the males in the pedigree diagram. The next step, we fill in the other information that we know for sure are the females with color blindness. We know they have to be homozygous recessive. Right, so number one has to have two of the alleles for color blindness, as well as number eight and number 11. Okay, so at this point, the remaining ones are those with normal vision, number four, six, and 10. You need to try and determine whether they are homozygous or heterozygous. So step four, the normal parent, the, remember we're only left with females. So the mother of an affected individual must be heterozygous. So let's look at the affected individuals whose mothers are shown, number one's mother is not shown, number five, seven, and eight, as well as 11, 12, and 13. We know the genotypes of their mothers already. It's number nine, whose mother is number four, who we need to still determine. So number four has to be heterozygous because number nine, it's a male. The Y chromosome obviously came from the father. And that means that the X with the recessive allele definitely had to come from his mother. And number four being normal would also have a normal allele. So number four is definitely heterozygous. Then the fifth step, the normal daughters of an affected or recessive individual must also be heterozygous. So if you look here, number one, it's a affected person that is um, having two recessive alleles. Obviously, she had to give a recessive allele to each of her children, number four, number five, number six, who we are interested in now, gets a recessive allele, as well as number seven. And then number six being normal, it would mean that from the father, number two, they had inherited a capital letter allele, a dominant one, which makes her heterozygous as well. So we're only left with number 10 now. The remaining females, can either be heterozygous or homozygous, we won't be sure. So if they ask you about them, you give two options that either homozygous, two of the normal alleles, or a normal allele with a recessive allele, you won't be 100% sure. We hope that the step-by-step -step analysis of a pedigree diagram for sex-linked inheritance would have made your learning and understanding much better. If you have any questions, please type them out in the comment section. We'd appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe.